Well, you know, um, I carry to you two kinds of greetings. The first one is from the Lutheran Confederation. We are a communion of churches representing 144 churches and including the ELCIC working in 79 countries and we are 72 and a half million. Strange enough that we have increased and not decreased, although churches in the north have decreased in number, because of our churches in, uh, in the south, in Africa and Asia. There we notice that our churches are increasing in number. For example, the Mikani Yezu Church, which used to be 10 years ago, half a million. Today they are over 6 million. And I can see that in the work that they are doing in Diakonia, they will be, in 10 years, I think something like 12 million. It can be one of the largest Lutheran churches in the world. This is because of mission, because of Diakonia, that that church is active in. And so you can see, and I can just go to say about many of our churches. The important thing today is that in the Lutheran World Federation, where I was honored to be elected as the first Arab-Palestinian Christian. Um, and of course, the Church of Canada has been supported for my election. It's a tenure of seven years. And it's from an assembly to assembly. But we have considered ourselves to be no more a federation of churches. We are now a communion of churches. That means we are all joined by the power of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are all in pulpit and altar fellowship. That means when I come to this church or to any of our 144 churches, I'm at home because we are in communion. And when they come to Jerusalem, or when they visit each other, we feel we are one. Today, the Lutheran World Federation is preparing for the 500 years celebration of the Reformation. And we are very happy to say that, uh, that in, uh, at this time of history, we succeeded to have a good dialogue with many of our ecumenical partners. When we are going to celebrate the 500 years of reformation, we are not celebrating it in a triumphant way, but we are celebrating it in a humble way. Our assembly will not meet in Germany in 2017. We succeeded to have it in Namibia. And the reformation will be celebrated in Africa not in Germany, the country of the Reformation. This shows that the Reformation is changing the scope of the whole world. Secondly, we are, when we want to celebrate it, we are celebrating it ecumenically. When I met Paul Benedict XVI in 2010, I challenged him on two issues on behalf of the Lutheran churches in the world. First of all, I spoke with him on Eucharistic hospitality. That means that those Catholics who are married to Lutherans can, until we, the leaders of the church and theologians, agree on the Eucharist, on the Holy Communion, at least to allow them to, to have the hospitality of the table. And the second thing I told him, why can't we show our unity in 2017 after we, said we signed the joint declaration on justification by faith? Why can't we show a unity that Catholics and Lutherans are no more divided? And we have lifted, uh, we have lifted the condemnation against each other. So we, are, we accept each other as churches, 
Why can't we celebrate it together? He got animated and he told me, we are willing. Our commission has worked, you know, on a booklet which is called From Conflict to Communion. And last year, the Vatican and the Lutheran World Federation, both of us, have launched that document. The strength of that document is no more that we are no more concentrating on the issues that separate us, but we are concentrating now on baptism. And because we are thinking of baptism, baptism joins <coughs> us as sisters and brothers in Christ. I think there is no church, mainline church, does not accept the baptism of the other, even if they don't have theological discussions. But this is the reason why can we take baptism as a source of our power, as a source of our you know, mission in the world? Why can't we Catholics and Lutherans work together for mission in the world? Today, the issues in the world are much bigger than being Catholic or Lutheran or Orthodox or Mennonite or Anglican or whatever they are. Today, we have many challenges. We, we don't have only poverty. We have other issues in the world today. For example, colonialism is coming back to our world. In the 21st century, we thought we are that colonialism is behind us. We notice in many countries of the world that there is the unipolar is trying, you know, to overcome the whole world. We are noticing in the Middle East that there is another size pico. Size pico is the division of the Middle East between certain powers. And we don't know what are the powers. They are no more Britain and France today. Maybe they are the United States and, uh, and uh, Russia and China and Turkey and Qatar and whoever they are. They are going to divide now the Middle East. Today, if we are not united as Christians toward all these challenges, I think we, are, we, will, we will make really a big mistake. So we have to celebrate it in an ecumenical spirit. And we, the Lutherans, have very good relation with the Anglican, especially this country is leading in Lutheran-Anglican relations. You have, gone, you have stepped over the document of mutual recognition. You have united, even your assemblies are meeting. And that's an example for many of us in the world. I mean, in Europe, we, they have Porvo Agreement. But Porvo Agreement is just a paper. It's not more. But here, you step more than that. And that's an example how churches can work together and how, can be a, can, how, can, how they can be a common witness to our world. <coughs> and today, the world wants to see our unity, not our division. And we are really many times as Christians showing in the world our division, not our unity. This is the reason the Reformation must challenge, challenge us today, that we don't really, uh, as Christians, only think we are right and other, others wrong. If we are not united to work together in this world and have a common mission, I think, you know, we will lose the strength of mission in this world. We have a bigger mission than ourselves, than our structure, than our, than our churches. I mean, in the Lutheran World Federation, we speak on holistic mission and prophetic diaconia.